Day six, Flinders Island. Bad weather had rolled in. We technically had two medium days, one big day of paddling left. Getting across from Cape Barron and Clark Island was not really a problem because you can shelter around the islands. But crossing Bank Strait to Little Musrow Bay at this point was unachievable. It was a distance of only 25 kilometres. The wind was gusting up to 80 kilometres an hour and predicted to stay that way for the next three days. Then a brief two-day window that then would get bad again. That window never really came. So the advice from Poz was to wait out or bail out. We spoke to the local fishermen who told us crossing now was crazy or a death wish. I spoke to a couple of fellows down at the docks who had crossed on Thursday and weren't apparently scared in their boat. So we went four days tripping around Flinders Island. Going outside that morning, the sky was clear and the stretch of water between Lady Barron and Flinders uh, um, Island to Cape Barron Island looked relatively calm. We thought it we could make it easily. Then we went out to some of the more open beaches, different story. The bay really did look frightening in some areas. A good call on the holding pattern. There was a large amount of detritus watched up on the shore, including puffer fish, penguins, logs, etc. Beaches were spectacular. We spent the next few days tripping around Flinders Island, looking at the cattle, looking at the animals and wildlife. We visited the Patriarch's Wildlife Sanctuary and patted and fed the Bennett's wallabies. On the way up the northern end of the beach in the island, we saw wombats in the paddocks. I met a lovely local on the beach who had a pet swan that she'd nursed when it was in. So she let me stay and watch while she fed her swan. So does, he let, does it let you pat it? It doesn't like being patted. But it, it, since it's been wild, it's friendlier. Yeah. Like when it was, because it used to be with the chooks and, and it you know, used to hiss and everything, but. Saturday, the wind was so strong, the clorys were taking off and flying backwards. On the northern end of the island, it was a little bit more protected. So we tripped around there, watching birds and watching the wildlife and enjoying our isolation of the beaches by ourselves. The water in the northern end of the island was once again amazing. Yeah. Clarity was amazing, even in really deep water. Uh, this is the boat the ramp. Team you're with planning on running? We visited the distillery in Whitemark and bought some gin. They're currently in the process of building a new facility that will open shortly. We went to the bakery, spent some time in White Mark talking to locals. My wife bought some Kill Cranky Diamonds and artworks from a local artist. She'd given us some tips on places to visit in the island. Sunday night was sports club night for dinner. You can't book, you just show up. The dinner was fantastic and it has a very interesting menu. The scenery around Flinders really is quite breathtaking. You have the whole place to yourself. The population of the island is only around 900 people with White Mark and Lady Barron being the most populated and largest towns. Most beaches you go to are just empty. If there is someone there, they generally come up and chat and say hello because there's no one around and it seems a novelty to them. We found once again that the locals were always lovely and always happy to give tips and advice on great places to visit. The beach off Lady Barron once again is beautiful. The view over to Cape Barron Island was lovely other than some spotted cloud. We went to Kilcranky with an idea of digging for some diamonds. 
we could see Deal Island in the distance some 50, 60, 55 kilometres away. It was stunning to think only a couple of days ago we couldn't see Flinders until we were only 10 or 15 k's out. Here we were with a really clear view from 65 kilometres away. Deal Island over there, 65 k's away, where we came from on Wednesday. Much nicer weather than today though. It's still cranky. On a cranky day. This is my wife on a non cranky day. She saw a wombat, so she's happy. <laughs> we watch fishermen from Victoria chasing salmon off the beach. Southern end of the island. The offshore breeze was wild fishing. and they were there in shorts and t shirts and deep water. How do you reckon the weather's pleasant? On the Tuesday, after much deliberation, consideration of the weather and the advice and prediction of no let up or safe window to finish, the decision was made to abort. The weather was looking bad for another week or two, although from our accommodation in Lady Baron, it looked great. Jared flew out on Wednesday, Nomi flew out Thursday, and I caught the freight ferry from Lady Baron to Bridgeport with the kayak. I spent the afternoon in the Ferno Tavern, watching the sun go down and talking to Fiona, who owns the bakery in White Mark. The freight and ferry guys were helpful loading my kayak. The ferry only takes walk-on passengers twice a week. If you have to take the ferry, make sure you take a blanket and pillow. The lights go out at 9pm and the room is not the most comfortable in the world, but the sun going down over the islands was a fantastic view. I sat there and mourned the fact that we hadn't really finished our trip as we had planned. Ferry runs to the tide schedule. It leaves at different times each day. The ferry left at 8 p.m. and arrived in Bridport around 3.30 the following morning. <laughs> After spending a week in Tasmania, we caught the spirit of Tasmania Ferry back to Geelong. This is a little problematic. Ferry Turnwall has no freight storage. They don't really cater for people carrying large kayaks onto the boat. We stayed at the Edward Hotel, which was next to the terminal. They were most helpful and thankfully left me a trolley, let, lent me a trolley to carry the kayak to the ferry terminal. It is several hundred metres walk around the streets and after arriving at the terminal, they told me they didn't know if the kayak would get on. It was too big. After some diplomacy with the guys at the terminal, they let us on. Cube freight guys were most helpful. We had lots of people approaching us, asking questions about the kayak as they'd seen us carrying it on. It seems that outside of the kayak world, sea kayaking across Bass Strait seems ridiculously dangerous to people. Trousers point, last point we paddle to on the journey, everyone's shipping out on planes and ferries and whatnot to get home. It's a lovely looking spot. Unfortunately, we didn't make the whole distance we crossed the strait, but didn't get to mainland Tassie due to the weather, so shame of an end. All in all, it was a fantastic trip. Bass Strait is an awe-inspiring place to visit. We'd gone back to visit Trousers Point to pick up the boat on Wednesday morning and mourn the loss of getting not getting to our planned end point. It was extremely disappointing not to reach the destination because of 25 kilometres. Plus, is after doing the trip, lots of people are interested in you going with them on their future planned trips to bring some experience. Pictures of the Bass Strait from the plane give us a sense of the scope of the region. It really is a spectacular place to visit.